Hi everyone, today I am just going to walk you through exactly how to build a digital product listing from scratch. And so I am just on my homepage within my Etsy shop on the dashboard page. So the first step is just to click on listings. And once that is loaded, we will click on add a listing over here in the top right hand corner. The first thing you'll want to check is digital files. I made it and it is a finished product in recently 20 to 24. Then you'll click continue and it will bring you up to this page here. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to cancel this and move back to one of my own listings that is already built out so that we have all of the information so that you can reference what I'm actually speaking about. So I'm just going to click on this one here and then we'll work our way kind of um, just top to bottom. So the first field to fill out is the title field. This is where all of your keywords should go and what it is that your product actually is. So in my case, they are usually all sublimation designs, whether they are tumbler wraps or wind spinner designs or um, clip art bundles. This is where that information should go. So this is not an SEO video, but do be sure to let me know in the comments if you are interested in seeing an SEO video, and I will definitely add that to the list. But basically the way that I structure it is kind of what it is, and then in order of the most search keyword down to the least. So um, it only allows you to have up to 140 characters, so do keep that in mind, and then try as much as possible not to repeat any of the keywords. And I do know that I have some repeating in there, so do as I say, not as I actually do. The next field is photos and videos. So you do wanna make sure this is filled out as much as possible if you have different versions or mockups of your actual digital file. This is where you'll want to include this. So I have a video on some of mine, which this is just an auto-generated one from Photoshop. And then I actually show the designs that I give away for free. I have a flat lay mock-up so they can see the design in full. I have instructions on how to actually download their digital file. This helps alleviate a lot of customer service issues if you have this here, kind of showing them the steps one, two, and three of how they can actually download a file. The next image is just another mock-up of the same one just without the logo and then finally just some instructions that this is not a physical product even though this is here it is still many times that people will reach out thinking that this was a physical product and then I have this to rely on that um, it was in the images that this stated was stated that it was a digital product so your next image or your next field is the thumbnail image and this will automatically be whatever is in the first primary field here and so you can adjust this if you click on this if you need to move this in or out to be closer um, i usually just leave mine because mine are formatted exactly to fit here so i don't usually have to adjust that at all the next field is the digital files field so this is where you are actually going to add your products and Etsy does have a 20 MB um, limit here. So if your file is very large or maybe it is a bundle of clip art like this where there are 18 different files within it, you will need to add a PDF with a link to either your Dropbox or your Google Drive or wherever it is that you are storing those files for your customer to click on the PDF and then be able to click on the link and then access the files. Um, I do provide mock-ups with mine and then I have the free designs that were promised to them here as one of the file uploads as well. You can upload up to five files so if you were selling a bundle of five clip arts um, then potentially you would be able to just add them all individually without having to link to file storage. So the next um, field is your description. So this is also important to make sure that you have your um, listed in here in a conversational tone in a way that makes sense for a reader to understand. So mine is specifically telling you exactly what this file is, what it is for, how it is to be used, and how it is not to be used. So it's very instructional because there tends to be some confusion with sublimation versus SVG, 
uh, files and different types of crafting files. So I usually make it very clear uh, what this type of file is for so that there's not any confusion later if it doesn't end up working for the project that they need. The little note to buyers up here will be set within your shop settings. I just have it with instructions on how to actually download that. So that is something that you will set up in your settings when you set up your shop to make sure that this goes out automatically with whatever you want your customers to read when they actually purchase the product. The next field would be for personalization, but this would not apply for a digital product unless you were actually offering personalization and then I believe you would have to actually set it up as a physical product um, because you would have to fill the order once you were done with the personalization say you were making this file but you uh, personalized it with their name and then provided the final file to your customer you could definitely do that but I do not offer personalized digital products so I leave this alone the next field is the price field so this is the product price and then you have your quantity. So I usually always have mine just set to the max, which is 999. Um, that way I don't usually have to worry about it for a very long time and it just auto renews and I won't have to worry about it until it actually sells out. And then I'll just put that quantity back to the max again when it does actually finally sell out. This is something that you already did when you chose the digital files at the beginning. You could choose the physical or digital files, so you'll just leave that alone. And then the next is the category. So for me, I have always, and there's several different ways you could probably classify sublimation prints and different types of um, art uh, graphic designs. I've always had mine under digital and just digital is the end. Uh, but I believe if you type in template, so say you are sell selling um, Canva templates or Google Sheets templates or something, there actually is a templates category under templates. So you could choose that. I don't think that there actually is a clip art. Oh, there is. So clip art actually has this. I probably should maybe think about putting mine under digital prints, but it's still just a digital file, which is why I've left it at that. So as you can see, you can kind of go back and forth with this because mine could te technically be considered an image file as well. So I don't believe that they had it this far when I started, uh, which is mine were under, which is why they were under digital. But as you can see, there's several different um, suggestions or um, categories that you can choose from. So just choose the one that um, best fits your product. If you did planners, I'm just trying to see. They do have planner templates, um, calendars and planners. If it is just a printable um, instead of an editable template, that would be the difference there. Let's see if SVG. They do have cutting machine files, which is an SVG. So that would be your choice there. And then let's see for digital papers. I would assume this is more towards physical um, scrapbooking papers that you could probably order. So I would assume digital paper would still be under digital. Um, but we could always check the Etsy forums and figure this out more specifically if you needed to, depending on what your product is. Personally, I have never filled out the attributes just because usually my designs have every color and any color in between. And then I do not do the size because it's listed in the description and it's not really a physical product anyway. And I don't do anything with the orientation. So the final place for your keywords is the tag section. So again, these are the keywords that people are searching for when they type into the Etsy search field. So for an example, some people might come put in something just like Tumblr wrap, and that is going to give a wide amount of searches. Tumblr wrap PNG, you can use the Etsy search bar to come up with different uh, variations of your keywords. And just do keep in mind that when you are filling this out, it is up to, um, I believe 12 characters, maybe a little bit more. Um, but that is what this is for. So I usually try to um, put as many of these that are not included in my description or my title, which mostly it's, there's only so many ways that you can um, describe a Tumblr wrap 
or a PNG clip art. So um, this is pretty much it as far as those tags that I use and then I will put in some specific ones to the style. So affirmation tumbler, motivational tumbler, and butterfly tumbler. You will not need to do anything with the shipping field because it is an immediate download, so this will already be done. The settings for returns and exchanges cannot be edited as well because digital items are not eligible for returns or exchanges due to the nature of the item. So this policy cannot be edited, so you don't have to worry about this. However, if someone reaches out because they say that it wasn't right or there's uh, an issue with the design, it is um, up to you as the seller if you want to refund them or not or replace it. Your next section is the shop section. So this is how you categorize your digital products. So mine are categorized by a different style. So you can have up to 20 different categories right now. If you haven't set these up, you can add a section here. I can't, I don't believe I can add a section because no, I can't. Um, it's going to let me. Um, that's interesting because I didn't think I had any more slots, but maybe I'll have to check and see if I have more uh, available than I thought. Or maybe they've changed it and you can have more, which would be interesting. Anyway, this is just the category um, that you are setting up by the organization of your own store. So this can be by product, by style, by anything that you want to categorize it. Um, they do say it does have a little bit to do with the Etsy SEO as far as buyers being able to find that. So I wouldn't recommend naming it just something that you are familiar with. You'll want to name it something that might have to do with the keywords or the product itself that makes sense within the Etsy algorithm. So um, this is to feature your listing if you want to feature it on your homepage. I don't believe, I think I have mine set up, I do. So <laughs> you can choose which ones are featured up here um, by clicking this and then the next one will be if you want the Etsy ads turned on or off and then you can control this within your ads later if you want to turn it off um, when I am running ads I will usually have them on from the beginning and then I'll monitor them and see if they need to be turned off or um, um, well yeah turned off at, at a later point so the last thing is your renewal options so mine is always set to automatic meaning it will just auto renew either every four months when the listing needs to auto renew or it will um, auto renew when it sells and it needs to just automatically relist so i do not manually do this because i do not have the time to monitor 4,000 plus listings um, every time something sells, which are still hundreds a day. So I have mine set to automatic. There, you can do this manually, and then every time it sells, you can automatically add a quantity um, and do it that way to do the scarcity tactic as far as like showing only nine left. And that does work, and I would recommend it if you maybe have a smaller shop that doesn't sell a huge volume of graphic designs, that's something where that would be possible, but otherwise it would be a lot of manual work if you had lots of sales coming in to be manually um, relisting that every time something sell, sold and then you'd be wondering half the time if you had done it and then you would be missing out on the sales because it wasn't automatically just relisted. So once you have everything filled out, then you are just ready to publish. I don't believe I made any changes, but anyway, this would just be published or you could preview it and see it on Etsy by clicking preview just like this, and then you can see what it looks like. So um, that is it for um, listing a digital product on Etsy. If you do want to see how I use the bulk uploader software tool, Vela, to bulk add my listings to Etsy, then do let me know in the comments as um, I don't normally add listings like this individually. We have our templates set up over here in Vela and it just makes it a lot easier to create listings in bulk and just publish them at once, add all of your images, add all of your files at once and then publish them at once instead of doing that whole process 
um, manually every time. So if you'd like to see how I set up my templates and how we publish them in bulk, then just comment something like Vela down in the comments below and I will be happy to make that tutorial video. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all for real in the next video.